collar ballers, what's going on? It's Breacher, and we're kicking things off with our lovely Warlords of Draenor guides with the Combat Rogue. I thought, why the hell not? This thing is one that is a go-to for a lot of people. Some people find it boring, some people find it very exciting. What is the Combat Rogue? If you decide to play one because you've never played a Rogue before and you've just capped, or because you've seen your friends chopping things to pieces, the Combat Rogue is the meat grinder. That's what it is. It's the chop, chop, slice and dice, rip everything to pieces, meat grinder spec. It is the one for the cleave. If we're doing lots and lots of cleave, it is the easiest way to go about it. The best? Some would argue in some situations, yes it is. It currently resides at number two in the preferred DPS specs for High Mall, which is what we're currently raiding. So it's a sub at the top. Combat in the middle, and then assassination, sadly languishing down below. So, combat, what's the basic premise? If you're just starting a rogue, or you're just starting your combat rogue, or you're thinking of switching over to combat, what is the premise of it? Very simple. Where every spec in the game has a very basic idea and foundation. With the rogue, the combat rogue, it is about using as many finishers as possible to reset the cooldown on your special abilities. Them being Adrenaline Rush and Killing Spree. That is your job as a combat rogue. Above all else... Above all the theory and all the math that gets thrown around and all the people trying to make the spec more complicated than it is, it is quite simply a case of use as many finishers as possible in order to reset the cooldowns. That's it. Thanks to our ability Ruthlessness, every five, po five point combo finisher we use uh, will reduce the cooldown by 10 seconds. Well, two seconds each combo point. So you can see that there. So it's your finishing moves that grant that. Now, Slice and Dice does not, which is something we'll bear in mind later on as we go through the gameplay. So we'll talk about gearing, then we'll talk about your glyphs, and then we'll jump into how you actually do some damage with this motherfucker. Yeah, nice and easy, nice and easy. So, first of all, some glyphids. Uh, if you're out in the world, which I am generally out in combat, is you want your Glyph of Deadly Momentum still. Even while capped, yeah? While you're out in the world. But when you're raiding, not so much. Not so much. But Glyph of Deadly Momentum definitely has a place when you're out in the world doing your sort of stuff. I always recommend Glyph of Sprint. Glyph of Sprint is so vital to doing good DPS. Because if you're sprinting, it means you're trying to reach something. You're either trying to avoid something while still doing damage and moving at a nice pace, or you're trying to avoid something and then get back to the boss. And rogues don't do any damage when they're not in melee range, right? Simple as that. Very easy. So the Glyph of Sprint means we'll get back to our target quicker, resume DPS quicker, winning. Absolutely winning. Glyph of Faint. Such a must, in my opinion. Faint does cost us energy. There's no, de no getting away from it. Faint is one of our most powerful abilities in the game. Especially if you move up towards Heroic and Mythic. You're going to be using Faint a hell of a lot. So giving it an extra two seconds covers your ass even more. Dead DPS? No DPS. You don't want to be that guy lying on the floor. Your raid leader's bound to be saying, Oh, don't die, don't die. Rogues shouldn't die unless you really screw up. Especially with Faint. Most things that can kill you in High Mall are indeed AoE abilities. And therefore Faint reduces them a lot. Makes your healer's life a lot easier. And generally you become an absolute badass beyond that you can pick and choose whatever you want particularly glyph of disappearance is one that uh, is really quite nice resets your makes your vanish come back cooler your glyph of disappearance this is what i roll with in raids reduce the cooldown on vanish by 60 seconds and we're going to be using vanish to pull out some nice ambushes which then leads us nicely to the talent system so the talent choices i recommend for raiding are shadow focus kind of the only one you can take okay so what we'll have is our energy will be low. When you start you're playing your combat rogue in Warlords and early gearing, you'll realize a real lack of energy. That's going to be going on a lot. You're going to feel like energy starved. In those periods of time, though, we could take advantage of Vanish and Ambush, which is going to grant us some combo points, not going to cost us anything, and it's a nice hard-hitting ability. So Vanish and then into Ambush. We're going to be opening the fights with Ambush as well, meaning we'll go straight into the fight. It'll cost us way less energy. Shadow Focus is kind of a must-have for that. Level 30, I disagree with a lot of websites on this stuff who say that combat readiness is kind of the default. I have never found an occasion in the game so far that combat readiness would be helpful. Nerve Strike, on the other hand, yes. There are several stunnable things in High Mall. As you move up through the tiers, they're still stunnable. Not every fight, absolutely not every fight, but certainly in your five mans, certainly in whatever content you're going to be doing, you'll have far more opportunity to kidney shot things. And that's going to help a lot. And Nerve Strike is going to come out there. Beyond that, I actually consider both the other two useless. Is such I've never had to use combat readiness yet. Not once in any of the rating. We are rating Mythic at the moment. Not happen. Deadly Throw? No. Just not going to happen. At level 45, you're going to be rolling with either Cheat Death or Elusiveness. I'm taking Leeching Poison because I'm out doing some Steam Weedle rep. Nothing fun going on there, but I do prefer the healing. Leeching Poison is practically useless while you are raiding. 
absolute garbage, waste of time. If you're ever at the point where you constantly need healing, then the fight will probably allow for that, and faint itself, which comes with elusiveness, would be far better. The elusiveness in nearly 99% of cases. 99% of cases, I'm going to rock an elusiveness. Faint reduces the damage taken by 30%. You can goof up. This is what this allows you to do. You can re re you can totally goof up. You get that nasty debuff. You haven't got cloak. You've got this and that going on at the time. Pop a faint and you'll still take 30% less damage. It's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic ability. Cheat death. A lot of people sort of swear by cheat death. Honestly, you have to really screw up in order to require cheat death. Something's gone wrong. It's probably a wipe anyway where cheat death will proc. Unless you're soaking something in particular, then cheat death might become in, uh, invaluable. But personally, I prefer to have the damage reduction from elusiveness is what I'm going to tell you right there. Next one, Shadow Step is pretty much mandatory. Burst of Speed while we're out in the world. Because, of course, we've all got Burst of Speed. If you've not been a rogue and tried Burst of Speed, especially in combination with Night Stalker while you're leveling, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. But it's far too expensive in a raid because that's 30 energy that could be going towards a DPS ability. It's just too damn expensive. You're going to take Shadow Step, but in combination with that Glyph of Sprint and all that, you should barely ever be out of melee range unless you absolutely have to be. You can always get through it. And also, we can Shadow Step through Flames if you're looking at Twin Ogron. If you're doing Bracken Spore Mythic, you can Shadow Step through the Fire. You can do all these kind of things. Shadow Step is just the next must. Now, 75. As I said, some things are stunnable, which kind of leads you towards Prey on the Weak. Prey on the Weak means that while things are under the effects of Kidney Shot, 10% increased damage from all sources. That's your whole raid, people. That's important. 10% increased damage from all sources. So why don't I have it? I don't have it because Warriors, fucking Warlocks, Paladins, everything... Even if you ask, and I've asked on many occasions in several groups, regardless of anything, let me stun this first, because I can give us 10% extra damage. You'll see that kidney shot DR'd to fuck. What is DR? Diminishing returns. If you keep stunning something, then the duration of that stun gets reduced dramatically. To the point where I've seen my kidney shot last two seconds, three seconds, stuff like that, and therefore praying the week was inter incredibly pointless. Internal bleeding... Okay, this you might find this hard to believe, but internal bleeding is the most powerful finisher a rogue has. That bleed is very, very fucking nasty. And if you can kidney shot something, you should be on cooldown. Believe me, this bleed is kick ass. Really kick ass. And it doesn't matter if that mob has diminishing returns on it. The bleed stays regardless, okay? So if you kidney shot something and everyone stunned it and it's going to wear off, you get a full duration bleed out of it. That's an incredible DPS increase. Very, very cool. If you can control your raid groups or your party or whatever to allow you to stun first, take Prey on the Weak. Okay? 10% extra damage for you. 10% extra damage for your entire raid. It is far better. Just be aware of what's going on in the raid. Do you have people with itchy trigger, itchy trigger fingers on the stun? That's going to suck. At level 90... Anticipation is the only choice for me. It has, gives you control. Control is everything in damage, yeah? You want to be able to do control. What do we talk about? The fundamental basics of combat. Making sure we use our finishes effectively to reset our major cooldowns. Anticipation means we can go past five combo points and get ready for certain situations, which allows us to reset our cooldowns faster, yeah? Anticipation is better. Some people on mathematically the same mark for death is better by an absolute minimal margin. It's a huge pain in the ass, and it gives you lack of control, in my opinion in certain situations which can't be really predicted because of movement and whatnot. In a real world scenario, anticipation wins every single time in my opinion. A level 100, kind of sad. Death from above is a no-go. It's just too weak, too expensive, doesn't do enough. A little bit sad on that one. Death from above not quite making the grade. Shadow Reflection should be awesome. It should be, but it doesn't reset like our Adrenaline Rush and Killing Spree do. It's not affected by Ruthlessness, which means you get one really good Shadow Reflection, then your Shadow Reflection is going to kind of linger around, waiting for your cooldowns to come back up. It really just doesn't synergize well, which means it's not going to make the grade. Whereas Venom Rush, more energy. More energy, more regen, more finishes. Resetting our cooldowns faster is just the glory to the Hypno Toad all the time. It really is. Venom Rush is just the mandatory. There's no choice there. Hopefully, some things will get tweaked. I would like to use Death from Above. It's a really nice ability. Shadow Reflection is unlikely to see much unless we get really, really heavy, hard hitting stuff where the Shadow Reflection is worthwhile. But at the moment, it's the Venom Rush. We're lacking, lacking energy big time in these early days of Warlords, and therefore, Venom Rush is going to work. So. Gearing. What's our gearing? 
Warlord has removed reforging and essentially removed gemming, unless you're very lucky, which means we can't particularly be choosy about our stats anymore, right? We can't do it. It's just, you can't get a piece of gear that's pretty crappy and turn it into something that's pretty average. We get stuck with stuff. So what I recommend to everybody who's getting a new character, rogue or otherwise, is simply find out what your best couple of stats are and what your worst is. And all you do is you try and focus on, has it got my good stat? and the least amount of my worst stat, and you just kind of work it that way. So for combat, you want haste and multi-strike. Haste and multi-strike at the top, and you want the least amount of critical strike rating as possible, and try and get rid of it. Unfortunately, as we said with Wad, a lot of this stuff is unavoidable. You can see I've still got a Dark Moon Trinket, which is giving me a crit proc, which is pretty crap. Crit haste, so I've got my best stat and my worst stat on one item. The Legendary Ring, which is absolute dog shit for everybody. And of course, moving dongs to things like versatility and mastery. So... What about things like versatility and mastery? You said haste, multi-strike. I did, but I also said the worst was crit. So if it falls in between there, that's kind of the best you're going to get. Also bear in mind that agility kind of trumps everything. So if I'm comparing these boots to say, I haven't got another pair, but another boots which is 640 with really good stats, I'm getting a shit ton more of agility out of the heroic boots, and therefore I kind of had to pick that up. Plus, it doesn't have crit on it, which is a kind of mini bonus. Versatility, multi-strike, multi-strike's great. Okay, versatility is kind of bad, but not the worst thing in the universe. And you get haste crit again, which is a bummerino. There's not much we can do about that, and working around it like that. So that's the system. What are your top two stats? What's your worst one? Try and get more of one and less of the other wherever possible. But sometimes you get items like this, which are just they're a troll. They're a troll. Loads of crit and haste. Great. Wonderful. Magic. Absolutely amazing. And that's the way you want to do it. What about weapons, Preacher? I've heard you can use daggers and all sorts now. Eh, well, you can. You can equip them. The general rule of thumb is, if you've got two weapons that are exactly the same, you want a slow weapon in your main hand wherever possible. Get a slow weapon in your main hand. And another slow weapon in your off hand. Ideally, you want two slow weapons for combat. That's the ideal. However... However, if you, like me, get a very, very good dagger, I managed to coin this Heroic Warforge dagger, it is so much better than the other sword that I had from Five Man Heroics that it is going to be a DPS increase for me to have that in my offhand, okay? That's how it's going to work. Weapons tend to dictate your spec. So don't come and think, oh, I have two really good daggers, can I use them for combat? No, dagger specs are sub and assassination. You should be going that way. But if you do have a very good main hand and a very good dagger, that's okay. If they were both equal stats and I had another sword of equal stats to this dagger, I would prefer the sword, okay? But in, in these situations, you can in fact use a dagger. It will be a DPS increase if that dagger happens to be significantly better than your other alternative. If you do not have any slow weapons, you should be playing a dagger spec. It's really as simple as that. Weapons tend to very much dictate what a rogue will be playing. That's just how it works. So gameplay-wise, what are we doing, Preacher? How can I kick ass on this? Well... We have to talk about Deep Insight, because it's going to show up on your screen like this big red fucking ball of death, and my god, I wish I could get rid of it, and that sounds really anti-rogue. This is my main character, and I'm saying Deep Insight I wish would get the fuck out or be in some way better. Deep Insight, okay, what does it do? It increases your damage done on targets. Every time you use Sinister Strike, yeah, you're going to gain Insight. So you can see here I have Shallow Insight. Then I did some more Sinister Strikes, so I got Moderate Insight, increasing my damage dealt by 20%. As I keep Sinister Striking here, you're going to see this advance. So there's, this, there's the Moderate, keep Sinister Striking, keep Sinister Striking, and then I get this. Oh my god, I should do something crazy here. I should save my cooldowns for this. I should do something, because look, I got big red daggers, which means I should be kicking ass. I do 30% more damage. Unfortunately, this is kind of really irritating, because what's the fundamentals of the spec? Reset our finishes, our cooldowns as soon as possible, which means we need to use them as soon as possible. Deep Insight very, very rarely lines up nicely with Adrenaline Rush or Killing Spree. It very rarely happens. It's a pain in the ass. It's a nightmare. It's it does not homogenize homogenize well with the the way combat works. It's not good to try and delay. Because what you can do, as I said, Sinister Strike causes your insight to improve. You can use Revealing Strike to kind of hold it back, but. The fact is, while you're doing that, you're missing out on things like extra combo points. While your revealing strike is on, your sinister strike can generate extra combo points. Missing out on combo points means you're missing out on finishes, which means you're not resetting your cooldowns fast enough. Do you see the, the path we're going down here? Delaying it is generally not a great idea. 
it's not a great idea. You would have to be very, 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 very aware of how many sinister strikes you had done. Are you about to move into deep insight that you can do one revealing strike and that's going to give you the time to get into a full deep insight, assuming you've checked the cooldown numbers on Adrenaline Rush and Killing Spree and so on and so forth to make it work? I'm telling you here right now, just don't bother. Don't bother because you'll overcomplicate what is in fact a very simple spec to get right. In very, very, very rare occasions can you control your insight enough to make it work. And very rare. Every time you use a, re a, re a revealing strike incorrectly, you're costing yourself potential combo points and potential 10 seconds. It's 10 seconds, guys. It's so much time cut off your abilities that delaying it and using a revealing strike like that is really going to screw you up. Really going to screw you up. Your default go-to poison will be instant poison. So, how do we pull? You get into stealth, yeah? You get into stealth, you get your potion ready, you're looking at the big bad boss, you're ready to go. You're going to shadow step in, your opening gambit is going to be an ambush. Ambush, then revealing strike, then you slice and dice. Now you have a couple of choices about how you want to do things. Some rogues like to go straight into a killing spree immediately. And due to the fact that killing spree has a shorter cooldown than adrenaline rush, and adrenaline rush will allow us to churn out a lot of finishes, you always use killing spree before adrenaline rush, okay? All the time. If they're lining up to be about the same, you should be checking the numbers on them, then you want to wait for your killing spree. And this is where anticipation comes in. So you can start storing combo points. What we don't want to do is cap our energy, okay? Because that's wasted combo points again, so our cooldowns could be set finisher. And you don't want to waste combo points. And you can store up to 10, okay? Bear that in mind. So, what I prefer to do is I like to open with an ambush, revealing strike, slice and dice. Now, I don't want to energy cap while in killing spree. So two sinister strikes means that my energy will go down far enough that my killing spree doesn't allow my energy to cap again. And then I can go straight into adrenaline rush. And therefore, I've wasted no combo points. And I've wasted zero energy. Okay? I have maximized every resource I have. Absolutely maximized it to the best of my ability. And that's what you should be doing. During the fight on single target, as I said, let's wait for this to wear off. You'll enter these periods where you can't press anything, like here. I just can't press Sinister Strike quick enough. That's where you'll do things like Vanish Ambush, okay? You can fill that time. You can then use your preparation to reset that. More downtime, more downtime. Oh, Vanish Ambush. Especially if you can get those during Deep Insight. Very nice. Does wonderful, wonderful damage. Well worth it. And that's basically it, guys. All you're doing after that is maintaining. What you're going to watch for is things like this. Oh, I have five combo points, but my killing spree has eight seconds left. What I'm going to do is build my combo points until my killing spree comes back, making sure I can use slice and dice because that doesn't affect ruthlessness. And now it's back, I can use my killing spree. Yeah. And come back into things and I can start resetting my cooldown on my killing spree. Use anticipation to your advantage. If you see adrenaline rush or killing spree is under 10 seconds, then you want to kind of hold off using a finisher. You want to just delay it a little bit. Use your anticipation to build up extra combo points. Because all that means, as you can see, I'm coming up to 14 seconds my adrenaline rush. I have five combo points. It's not really going to benefit me to do this. What I want to do is actually chill. Yeah, I want to chill out, wait for it to reset, let my energy build up, and it's all good. I can use a slice and dice. That doesn't affect my ruthlessness at all. And go. And I wasted no resources during that. No resources doing that. Just use your anticipation to your advantage all the time. The, the real best combat rogues are the guys who just simply have more access to their adrenaline rush and killing spree. What about AoE? Blade Flurry. Blade Flurry. As soon as you have two targets, you're Blade Flurrying, yeah? You're Blade Flurrying. If you have two targets, you're just going to focus on one and allow your Blade Flurry to do its work. Keep your revealing strike on and just go to town. Go to town. Killing spree. Go ahead and use it. Nothing changes particularly. Once you get up to like four mobs... It's worth using a Crimson Tempest just to get the bleed going. Now, bear in mind, the Crimson Tempest bleed, yeah, you're going to focus on the one target. The Crimson Tempest bleed lasts 10 seconds or 12 seconds. That means that if it's not going to live that long, which a lot of five-man mobs don't, then you absolutely do not want to bother just using Eviscerate. Just use an Eviscerate, really. The bleed needs to last its full duration to be worthwhile. But once you start getting five-plus mobs... Crimson Tempest and go to town. Just fuck off Eviscerate. All about the Crimson Tempest. Make sure, they're, make sure they're close. Make sure you're actually flurrying. What you'll notice is if I've got my scrolling battle text here, you can see the slice and dice effect. That means I'm blade flurrying. That means my blade flurry is making contact. And that's one of the things I use it for. In terms of add-ons, a couple of things that I recommend. I recommend Tell Me When. You might be wondering what my combo point add-on is. It's combo point redux. Okay, you can get this from Curse. Just nice, simple system. It shows you my combo points. I can track my anticipation down here. Get ourselves out of combat. And I'll show you the other add-ons I use. This is all tell me when. 
I've got a simple tell me when here. This is a revealing strike that just checks if the debuff is on the target, and I also get it to tell me when it's got three seconds left. Plenty of time to refresh revealing strike without having downtime. Wonderful. Slice and dice the same. It just checks do I have slice and dice. It lets me know with six seconds left, is my slice and dice about to run out? Six seconds is generally enough time to get up to five combo points. You'll likely already have some. Therefore, I have plenty of stuff. Blade Flurry just lets me know if Blade Flurry is on. Obviously, Blade Flurry costs you 20% energy regen when it's active. So leaving it on while single targeting is a DPS loss. And also tracking killing spree, adrenaline rush, shadow step, cloak of shadows, vanish, preparation, and tricks. Because it's a bit of a legacy ability as much as we don't really use tricks that much anymore. You'll still find opportunity. That is how you play a combat rogue, guys. So I'm going to jump in some gameplay now in the next video. Check that out. And that's going to be going through a, a heroic, a five-man heroic. All different scenarios of how we do damage. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you again.